Okay, time for a worked example. Uh, so once again, please download this and try the question before watching the video. Um, it'll be a whole stack more helpful. Um, so the, the question is the exemplar 2014 paper, um, question number six, some graphs, um, some Le Chatelier and a bit of a KC calculation. So once again, we're touching on everything. So the experiment, I mean, the, 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 the reaction that we're dealing with here is actually NO, um, N2O4 dinitrogen tetraoxide um, becoming decomposing to nitrogen dioxide. And we're told that the delta H um, for this reaction is positive. So define the term chemical equilibrium. Um, nice way of putting this one, it's where the rate of the Ford reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, remembering from uh, our last video. 6.2, how does the rate of the Ford reaction compare to that of the reverse reaction at each of the following times? Only write down higher than, lower than, or equal to. So if we're looking at T1 is the first one, how does the rate of the Ford reaction compare to the rate of the reverse reaction? The rate of the Ford reaction is always um, going from the N2O4 to the NO2. So in fact, this is still reducing in amount. So therefore, that, that reaction is still going faster than this one. It hasn't quite caught up yet. So the first one at T1, whilst it's still sloping, um, the reaction, the forward reaction is going to be is going to be faster. At T2, which is the next question, by this stage, meant to be flat lining, so um, they should be equal to each other because it's the system's in equilibrium. What change was made to the reaction conditions at each of the following times? In both instances, the equilibrium constant for the reaction did not change. Okay, so we're looking at T3, what happened at T3 and what happened at T4, and we're told and in both cases, the equilibrium constant for the reaction did not change. And that's an interesting little fact. We didn't mention that in the summary. But um, the one factor of all the different factors that we can change, pressure, concentration, temperature, etc., the one that does change the KC is, in fact, temperature. So without going into the whys, because it's quite complex, concentration, pressure don't actually change the KC. Um, but, but temperature does. And we're told in this case that in both cases the equilibrium constant does not change, so therefore it can't be temperature. So that's a little point to pick up on. Okay, at T3, nice and obvious, the one immediately changes, um, and so you can see that NO2, the concentration of NO2 was increased at T3. Okay, um, it's just a one marker, so you don't need to explain much more than that. And at T4, neither of them changed immediately, so it's not a concentration change. Without that information about the KC, I would have said a temperature change um, because they, neither of them spike at all. They both just slope to adjust. Um, but we kind of been put up against a wall because they've told us that the KC doesn't change. So whilst I disagree slightly, it must be a pressure change. And then we'll have to look and see, well, which, which way would the pressure um, have increased? Perhaps you've got the equation in front of you. Let me just do it for you quickly here, um, is going to go to 2NO2, so it's moles of gas. Um, if we are making more NO2, we must be increasing the pressure to favor the forward reaction. The reason I disagree is because I think if you increase the pressure, then both of them should actually jump up a little bit before they do the, they do the slopey thing. Um, but because they've mentioned specifically about the KC, we have to go with an increase in pressure. Okay, 6.4. How will an increase in temperature affect the yield of NO2? Write down increases, decreases, remains the same, and use Le Chatelier's principle to explain the answer. Three marks. Okay, so you remember the DLFR. So let's quickly think it through. The reaction has been heated, an increase in temperature. So our D is the temperature is increased. L, therefore, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will try and reduce the temperature. F, therefore it's going to favor a what type of reaction? An endothermic reaction, which is in fact a forward reaction because delta H is positive. And we asked outcome, R is the result, remember, um, how does this affect the yield of NO2? Therefore the yield will increase. 
Okay, so you can see how the DLFR works. Okay, it's only three marks, so you can absolutely knock that one out of the park if you used um, those four points. Let's use the mace here. Um, and then lastly, 6.5. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a KC calculation. So I'm just going to scribble a table up on the, on the board and then uh, give it a go. Initially, 0 0.92 moles of N2O4 gas is sealed in a 2 decimeter cubed uh, container and heated to 100 degrees C. Okay. Um, it is at equilibrium, it's found that 20.7% of the NO, N2O4 gas has decomposed to NO2. Calculate the equilibrium constant at 100. All right. So, just quickly, you can do it neater than mine. Um, here's my initial. There's my N2, sorry, N2O4, and here's my NO2. We started with 0 0,92 moles. We then were told that what happened was 20.7% of that decomposed. So you do a little calculation, what's 20.7% of uh, uh, 0 0,92, and it works out to be about 0 0,19, leaving at equilibrium, remember, uh, you do the I minus R will give you um, E, and so that will leave us with 0 0.73, okay. Uh, we were also told that, that that was it, so there was, there was nothing to start with, there was no uh, NO2 to, to begin with at all. We've got, it, we've got something on the R row. Maybe you only need one there. Um, reacted is also uh, changed. Sorry, I'm, I'm breaking my whole rice model. Sorry. Um, how much changed? Um, go back to the ratio line. It's a 1 to 2 ratio. So therefore, 0, 0,19 must be multiplied by 2, 0, 0,38. That was being used. That was being formed. So therefore, we end up with 0 0.38 of the NO2. I hope that made sense. Then we get on with our crackers, our rice crackers concentration there. And it was in a 2 decimeter cubed de container. So 0 0.73 over 2 and 0 0.38 over 2. Our KC expression is nice and simple. Um, it's products over reactants. So the NO2, don't forget the coefficient, and the dynamite. Tetraoxide underneath. Sub in the values, I'm not going to go through the whole calculations, and you will find um, at the end of the day you should get 9,76 times 10 to the minus 2. What well, units? doesn't have units. Kc is a unitless value. Um, but once again, it, just as a reminder, what does it tell us? Just in case they asked you, how, how far has the reaction progressed? Well, it's a very small number. Um, so it hasn't progressed particularly far. So that's um, a little example of equilibrium. Hope that's helpful. Do some more practice.